Hi, I'm Coach Daniel. And if you want to sleep amazingly well for the rest of your life, this channel is for you. Super excited to have you back here for this very important episode where we are going to talk about the acceptability threshold. This is something I've been working on for the last few weeks. And a uh, special shout out there to uh, one of my latest clients who has a acceptability threshold of 24 hours. And we just today worked on this. So uh, I, I think this is something really important. So what am I talking about here? Well, I think a lot of you will recognize yourself when I, when I expand here on what an acceptability threshold is. This is a minimal amount of sleep that you think is acceptable, that is okay. And it's sort of like a line in the sand. It is okay to, to be kind of uh, close to the threshold. You know, ideally you want to be well above it, but you know, anything above it is okay, but you've drawn a line in the sand, anything below that threshold, that's unacceptable. Now, uh, commonly this is, for example, if I sleep, more than four hours, that's fine. But if I go below four hours, that is not good. That's unacceptable. Another version of that is uh, if I have a sleepless night, okay, I can handle that. But if I have two, that is unacceptable. You know, or in the case of my latest client, uh, I, 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 I'm okay with not sleeping much, but 24 hours, that's where I draw a line. That's my acceptability threshold. Now, why do we have these thresholds? That is, that is a, you know, it's an important question. And the answer is, you know, in, very intuitively, you can understand why, because it is the desire for to have some semblance of control. You know, when you have trouble sleeping, like with any other problem, you want to solve it. And, a, you know, a, a step towards solving it is to set some kind of boundaries to, to give yourself a sense at some sense of control. Now, uh, the, the, the problem with this, though, is that we will see that it actually, you know, as, as we all know, you can't control sleep, and, and this threshold actually has comes with a lot of problems. Before we talk more about that, and what you should do if you have a threshold, if you have an acceptability threshold, is, is this. There are many ways to talk about what insomnia is. I use, you know, uh, the example of a perceived threat that you're trying to escape, or your desire, your, your, your desire to control something that you cannot control. Uh, but another way to put it is, is simply talking about pressure. You know, as somebody who sleeps really well, they, they don't do anything in particular to try to sleep. They don't think about sleep. They have, they feel no pressure to sleep and then sleep comes easy. The more pressure you sleep, the more you want to try to get it, the more your the more effort you put in a set, the more pressure, the less sleep you get. So keep that in mind. And, and before we talk about this, uh, you know, for going back to the acceptability threshold, I, I want to give you two examples uh, that shows how pressure uh, is really important. Uh, one example is uh, what I call a surfer's window. And this is when somebody says, as long as I fall asleep before 10, I do fine. But if, I, if I'm awake by 10, then I don't get a wink. And if you think of sleep as like, you know, uh, that sleep pressure or sleep drive or sleepiness is really important, then you would think, well, how's that possible? Like the longer you're awake, the more sleepy you should become, you should sleep better. But here's that, that pre where that pressure comes in again. As in this example, when you have the surfer's window and you feel like I have a wave to catch, if I don't catch that wave, you know, I don't get any sleep, that has to do with pressure. If you are, uh, you know, before in this example, 10 p.m., there's a little pressure, sleep comes easy. But the closer you get to 10, the more pressure to sleep. If you go above 10, dang it, you feel so much pressure now to sleep that um, it doesn't happen. Same thing with what I call surrender sleep, which is when you have been up like most of the night, tossing and turning, and you say, you know, it's weird. Like I always get my best sleep from like 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. or like 6 a.m. or like uh, in the early morning there. And I call this surrender sleep because it again is about pressure. You know, when it's 11 p.m., 12 p.m., 1 a.m., you still have a lot of, you know, much of the night is there. So you're thinking, if I if I just fall asleep now, I'll get it five hours. If I just fall asleep, at least I'll get four hours or whatnot. But then finally at 5 a.m., you're like, ah, I give up. I, I, you know, it's not happening. And then when you surrender, when, when that pressure goes away, sleep comes easy. So that, just two examples of how pressure is really important. Now, 
why is it problematic to have this acceptability threshold, this line in the sand, this line of last defense, if you will? Well, there are two, there are two big problems with it. Well, first of all, uh, in, in general, it creates, again, a sense of pressure. You know, you don't want to go, go below that, 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 uh, that threshold, so it's, it creates pressure. But that, I think that takes like two manifestations. One is this one, that when you have this threshold, this acceptability threshold, it doesn't matter how long you've gone sleeping well. You slept good for five nights, two weeks, three weeks, but you, you always think about that threshold. If I get close to the threshold, if I go beyond the threshold, what's going to happen? It's this lingering fear that that threshold produces that that doesn't allow you to sleep well even if you've done well for a quite a long stretch it's that lingering fear of that threshold that's one problem with it and the other problem is this one that whenever you're flirting with the edge there you're getting close to the limit like your threshold is four hours and last night you think you got four and a half you were so close to the threshold you know when you're getting close to the threshold that mounts the pressure mounts very very quickly or the other example if you say like uh, one sleepless night is okay, but not two. Then you had one sleepless night. It's like, dang it, I can't go below the threshold. I got to sleep tonight. When you get close to that line of last defense, then the threshold, the, the pressure mounts really quickly and you can easily get into tailspin. You go below the pressure and like, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. And now there's even more threshold to kind of get up, up above that threshold that you went under. You need to get up above it again and, and the threshold just mounts. So what should you be doing? Well, the short answer is you should try to abandon that threshold, but that can seem really frightening. And I'm very, very aware here that I'm asking, I'm asking you, anyone who tunes in here to do something that is really scary, you know, because that threshold is there to give you a sense of control. And I'm asking you to abandon that control. And I know this is very frightening and scary, but I also know it is important. I think it's really important so how can you do this? I, I think there are two very important par parts uh, to this. So one is detective work. One is detective work. And this is looking back, looking at, you know, historically what has happened. And think about those times where you actually went below your acceptability threshold. And think about what happened. And you may very well find, if you look for the clues, if you do your det detective work here, that, you know what, I actually went below the threshold that time and it wasn't that bad. Looking back, doing detective work can get you to a point where you see that that threshold, going below the threshold is not as, as uh, doesn't have that much catastrophic consequences as you may be thinking now. And the other one is looking into, looking into the future, seeing the future and imagining in your mind I know this is very triggering, but again, I think it's important imagining just in your mind how you go below the threshold. You envision yourself going below the threshold and you don't really have to do anything more. You can just envisioning and see what happens. And just by having done that, by going to that place you fear so much, you're showing your brain that it's, you know, I'm willing to go there. I'm willing to go there. And even if you just go there in your mind, it is diffusing that uh, anxiety that having the threshold has created. So you can again do detective work and you can also envision it happening in mind. And I think those two things are really important step towards not having that threshold. Because when you abandon the threshold, there is no more pressure from it and beautiful sleep happens. I hope this was helpful and brought you a lot of value. And please share in the comment section if you have such a threshold, if, if you had one in the past and how you think about this, uh, this episode and, and what it meant to you. So with that said, I, um, I want to thank everyone so much for tuning in. If you have any question, leave it in the comment section or as always, send it to questions at thesleepcoachschool.com. That said, uh, I hope to have you back here tomorrow or Thursday. And until then, 